I'm Lindsay Maloney, and this is the Booker Dream Clients Podcast. I built a six-figure coaching business while raising my three babies and working a nine-to-five, and I'm here to help you break free from the hustle mentality that's been holding you back from reaching your full potential so you can know your worth, step into your own power, and of course, book your dream clients. We have such a great episode for you today. It's with my friend Cami, and she is talking all about how to create a website that attracts our dream clients. And I know that is exactly what you want. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Cami, thank you so much for being on the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you so much for having me, Lindsay. It's my pleasure. I am so excited for the information you're going to share with us. I love what you do. I've known you for a while. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone. Tell us what you do and who you serve. Hi, everyone. I'm Cami, And if we haven't met yet, I'm a web designer. I'm a teacher. I'm a strategist. And I work with service-based business owners like you. So like coaches and consultants authors to really help them create a website that's not only beautiful, but actually helps you book more clients. Well, that's exactly what we need to hear right now is I love how you say you need more than a pretty website. You need a website that sells your services. So let's start with that. Amen. So the idea behind that, it came out of the fact that I was feeling really frustrated with my industry as a whole, because I was seeing a lot of websites that were really beautiful and really pretty and had lots of fancy bells and whistles, but from a strategy perspective, actually didn't really do very much and weren't helping that person book clients or get to their goals. And I thought, you know, for myself, even though I love web design and I love building websites, I don't want just a pile of code and pixels on the internet sitting there looking nice. What I really want is more clients and more students. And I want those things so that I can live a certain kind of life so that I can be location independent and set my own hours and really be my own boss in a way that I never was when I was back at my nine to five job. So what I want is this bigger outcome and it has these effects on my life. So I started thinking like, I don't care about a pretty website. Actually, I really care about the end outcome. So how can I make this website both beautiful and something that will get me to that end goal? Mm, I love that you start with the end in mind. I think that's so important as a business owner to look at that first and then work backwards. So of course we don't want our website to look like it came from, you know, 2002, but we also, we want like a healthy balance. So what does that mean having a website that sells our services? How can we get to that point? That's such a great question. And when you said, when you talked about reverse engineering, I was immediately reminded of something that my horse riding teacher says, um, I love to ride. And she always says, don't look down, look up, look where you're going. How are you going to steer that horse if you're not looking where you're going? And it's the same idea. So aesthetics are important. You know, there's been research to show that on your website, 94% of somebody's first impression of you is design related. So the way it looks is important and it is powerful, but we also have to combine that with that strategy piece of things. So thinking through what's the main thing that you want somebody to do on your website and how can we really use design and use aesthetics as a way to help them get there. Um, So I'll give you an example of a really quick way to do that. So grab a pen and paper if you don't have it already. And I want you to write down, I offer blank, blank, and blank. And I want people to come to my website and hire me by doing blank. So maybe it's that you offer, you know, one hour intensive coaching sessions. You have a three month package and then you have a year long mastermind and you want people to come to your website and hire you by booking a call. So because booking a call is the way you get hired, that's the main goal of your website. So when we design it and when we lay things out, everything's going to be really working towards that one outcome. That's so helpful. I see a lot of websites that are just so incredibly busy and I feel like that's a big distractor. Do you find that is very common with people who are just getting started? In, in my mind, 
I think a lot of people want to put everything on there because they're afraid of narrowing it down to one goal. Do you agree? I completely agree with that. And I see it often with really creative people like us who have a lot of interests and a lot of passions. And maybe there are some very real reasons for having a lot of things on your site. So I see it with people who have two different kinds of customer. So maybe you are coaching one-on-one clients, but you're also running a training program for coaches. Or maybe you've got several different interests under the same umbrella and thinking through how to organize those and present those in a way that's clear and simple can be very challenging. So that's where I see um, what I call kind of kitchen sink syndrome going on, where we've got everything out there because I think there's an impulse to to give a lot. We want to give everybody every piece of information and really give them the whole picture. When in reality, giving them too much is actually preventing them from getting the info that they need because we're not keeping it simple enough for them. Agreed. Uh, My audience and even myself, you know, we offer a one-on-one session, one-on-one work and group work. So do you think that's too much for a coach to have on their website or do you think that it needs to be simplified more? No, not at all. I think that that makes complete sense because it's two sides of a very similar offering. You know, your one-on-one work is you personally with somebody, your group is one to many, but probably you are coaching around similar things and similar topics. And the common denominator there is you. So Mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely fine. And it's actually nice to have a few different options like that in terms of the way people can work with you listed on your website. Um, But where you run into kind of problems with that is, for example, if you are a coach, but you also have a passion for renovating tiny homes and you are trying to present both your coaching services and your tiny home renovation services in the same place, unless you were coaching people who were renovating tiny homes, those two things wouldn't make sense together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I love the way you put that. I see a lot of people just like throwing everything on there and hoping something catches. And usually we find that that's not effective. Um, so what do you recommend when people just, how do people know if they have too much on their website? Yeah, there's been research from Google that I find really interesting that shows that visitors to your website prefer design that's both simple and familiar. And this is incredibly good news for all of us because it means that we don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to our layouts. We can rely on things that have been done before and have them be really effective. And we also don't have to get wildly creative in terms of design, keeping it simple, keeping it beautiful and clean that will have better results. Um, So in terms of how to go about doing this, I really like to look at each part of a page, you know, each section of a page on a website, be it your homepage or your services page and think, just break it down. Think, what is this thing doing on this page? What's this picture and this bit of text and this button doing for me? And how does that tie into my end goal? And does it help somebody achieve that or does it distract from it? So for example, on a homepage, if you had your three different services listed out, you could look at those and think, does that help somebody learn how to work with me and eventually book a call with me? Yes, it does. So that's a great thing to present on a homepage. Whereas if you had you know, a ton of old blog posts on your homepage, that might be a little further removed from that goal. So you might want to consider taking that out. Mm-hmm. It's very Marie Kondo. You think of you yes. know, what, what gets me closer to my end goal, what is helpful to get my visitor closer to their end goal, and then what sparks joy, and then you just declutter the rest. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I think that's the, the trend that is really, um, it's so sustainable, simplifying your website. You know, even three to five years ago, it seems like we had so much more content on our website. Do you agree? Absolutely. There was a trend. Well, a lot of the the industry that we're in now evolved out of blogging, right? So mm-hmm. back in the day when people first started, um, if you guys, there's a website called the Wayback Machine. If you guys Google that, you can actually type in people's websites and see what they looked like a few years ago. Oh God. Yeah. So I was actually just... Um, 
I was just chatting to Lindsay about this, but I was at Marie Forleo's book launch here in New York. And I was really curious to see what it looked like when she first started. So I went to the Wayback Machine and I pulled up her website and was fascinating. Um, but it was very much a blog. So it was a homepage that had a bunch of different articles. It had a sidebar. And for a long time, most websites looked like that. And then people started realizing that, you know, the internet grew, you started realizing you could earn money online, earn money as a blogger, start your own business. And the whole industry blossomed from there. And so I think for a while, we were still creating websites that looked quite a lot like those original blog style websites. And now it's much more about thinking a little more strategically. That I bet you everyone is looking at that. Oh my gosh. Can you remember that your first website? Can you describe it? <laughs> it was so bad, Lindsay. I'm completely self-taught as a designer. Mm-hmm. I, before I got into this, had no background in tech. I was an art history major and I was working in the art world. Um, and so I, I got into it because I wanted to start my own blog. And so I had to learn how to make my own website. I found the process incredible incredibly frustrating. So I went fully down the rabbit hole and I started taking coding classes. I started taking design classes. I like really was determined to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I came out of that rabbit hole and I was like, oh, I'm not a blogger. I'm a web designer now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, my first website looked like a toddler built it. There were lots of, I really struggled because I didn't have I didn't know where to find good images. Mm -hmm. I didn't have good images. So I created these bright orange banner graphics um, with lots of people's hands making different shapes that stood in for different letters. Uh, (laughs) It was just, it was not cute. (laughs) I remember mine too. I, I, I remember taking a summer class in high school. I mean, I graduated in 2002. So it was before my senior year, I took this HTML class and I built my own homepage and I just thought it was so cool. So then when I started my business, I, I was like, well, I know how to make a website. I don't even know what kind of random platform I used, but I had like, you know, the background colors mm-hmm. and the music, <laughs> just so busy and crazy. I hope we can, I hope that nobody can ever find that, but <laughs> I kind <laughs> but of miss the music, <laughs> right? That was like so good in like late nineties, early two thousands, the music. <laughs> yeah. Everything's like in flash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we, but the important thing is to note from that is we took action and we just like knew there was something there for us and we're just going to try it and look how far you've come. Like I'm looking at your simple site blueprint page, um, to get that free training. And it's just so simple, but effective and just so clear. And it's beautiful because that's exactly what people are looking for is bullet points, short statements. That's what's really trending right now. Do you think that um, this is going to be a trend that's going to stay for a while, this simplified look? I do. I think it's a little bit like the little black dress of web design. So in terms of designing your site, there are a few kind of big levers that you can pull that make a huge impact on how your website looks and feels without making the whole thing really fussy and complicated. So one of those big levers is imagery. And another one is your fonts and your layouts, having lots of nice white space. And I think that these trends are here to stay and they're only going to get, they're only going to develop because if you think about how many people are now browsing the web on their mobile phones and using these tiny little screens where a lot of really fancy stuff, a lot of really busy stuff makes it very, very difficult to use a website. So this idea of paring down and streamlining and simplifying, I think is important now. It's important in the future. And it also ages really well. Mm -hmm. So my website that you're looking at right now will still look nice in five years, three years Mm -hmm. where, you know, some trends you see and they look really outdated really quickly. And it's because internet years are a bit like dog years, you know, they just move so quickly. Yeah, definitely. Um, Let's talk about some before and afters with one, maybe one of your clients that you work for that the transformation was just huge, what they were struggling with before they worked with you and then the outcomes that they had after they received your guidance. 
One of my clients who springs to mind, her name's Laura and she's a photographer. So she works one-on-one with clients doing family portrait sessions and she's so good at what she does. She really takes these beautiful pictures of people's children that capture them in this moment as they are and they look so natural but just gorgeous. And if I was a parent, I would hire her immediately. And so she had, she had this business idea and she was doing it and working through word of mouth. Um, but her website was not supporting that at all. It was, um, she'd done it herself in WordPress and she was finding it really difficult to update and edit. She couldn't add images to her portfolio when she had a new shoot. She, things would break all the time for her. She actually got hacked once. Um, It didn't really work on a phone. She had all these kind of issues. And so as a result, she wasn't promoting her website and she wasn't sending her clients there. So she was getting word of mouth referrals, but she was feeling like she wasn't, the booking process wasn't as easy as it could be. Her website didn't look professional. It didn't represent her well. It wasn't helping her sell those services. And it wasn't helping her market her business either. So we worked together to really think about who is, who's the mum who Laura serves? Who is this woman who's going to come and buy this family portrait session? And what does she need to see and hear and read from Laura to make that decision an absolute no-brainer, to say that instant gut like, yes, that's my girl. I want to work with her. And then how do we lay everything out so that we can get that woman to book a call and schedule her session? So we went through that process together. And after we launched Laura's website, she wrote to me and she said, you know, Cami, I got new clients today. I had a photo shoot with them. And they said to me that they knew they wanted me the minute they clicked on my website. Mm. And that I think is so powerful. Mm -hmm. They knew they wanted me the minute they clicked on my website. And it's not magic, that process. It's just a little bit of good, thoughtful, strategic design, which is something that's so doable and so learnable. And you don't have to be tech savvy or a designer to make that happen. I love that you are not saying, you know, you just need to take some classes and you need to learn this and this and this. It's actually, it actually can be really simple. I've had clients who, you know, I teach coaches how to start their business and they've had, you know, web designers design their website and they have no idea how to even log in and do anything with their website. So it's just like dead in the water the minute they receive it. And that makes me sad because business owners don't feel like they have control over like the most important part of their business, their, their website. And it's very freeing to know that you can actually make a website that works for you easily. And I love that you help people do that. That's so important. So what do you recommend? What's your favorite website platform to build on? What's the easiest thing you can think of? My favorite website platform and my favorite platform for service-based business owners like us is Squarespace. And there are a few reasons for that. So first up is that Squarespace has these beautiful templates that have award-winning design. So when it comes to making that first impression that we talked about is 94% design related, these templates have such a great starting point and they're going to help you get there quicker. And the difference between Squarespace and WordPress on that one is that WordPress has hundreds of thousands of themes out there Mm -hmm. and some of them are great and some of them aren't. And it's very difficult to know what you're getting. Whereas with Squarespace, one of the reasons I love it is that you can feel comfortable and confident that that theme is high quality. The next reason I love Squarespace so much is that it's all in one. So they've got this amazing drag and drop page builder that makes it easy to create pretty much anything you want. You can Mm -hmm. add in buttons, you can add in email capture forms, a blog, photo galleries, events, contact forms, you name it, it's in there. Whereas on WordPress, you have to, I was, I'm comparing it to WordPress because I was on WordPress for years before I made the switch. Um, And so on WordPress, one of the things I found really frustrating is that to get those kind of features, you need to buy, you need to research and then buy these third party tools called Mm -hmm. plugins. And so every part of your website on WordPress is run by a different company. Your themes from one company, your contact forms from another company, your photo galleries 
it from another company. And when something goes wrong, it's up to you to figure out mm. who who to go to for troubleshooting, Mm -hmm. which on Squarespace, because it's all in one, you just go to one place. They've got 24 seven customer service. Things don't break very often because they're all created by the same company to work together. And it's just seamless and easy. And so when I think about my own business and I think about a business like Laura's or my coaching client, um, my client Maggie, who's a coach, what I think about what they need, it's a website that's set up to sell their services. And also, like you mentioned, a site that's easy for them to update and edit on the fly so that when they have a new idea for a program, they can throw up that sales page really quickly, or they can swap out an image or text. And with all of that in mind, Squarespace, I think is the perfect platform to do it. I agree. And I love that you started with WordPress and so did I. So we we have every right to talk about how much more we love Squarespace. And it's funny because... I wish I was getting paid to talk about Squarespace. Everyone who I love on the podcast and their websites, I always know their Squarespace before I even ask. So I'm always hoping I'm right. <laughs> you know, but, they have, they just came out with an affiliate program. They did? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome. They definitely yeah. need, needed to do that years ago, but good for them. That's exciting. But I agree. It's so easy to drag and drop. Everything it makes your life simpler. You know, if you're the the business owner, you need everything to be as simple as possible. So you can, you don't have to spend days looking for themes and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think their websites are a lot, they're high converting. I think that's always a big struggle for people to make the switch because they think that WordPress is um, better for conversions. And I, I hear that a lot. Do you hear that? Yeah. One of the big myths I hear a lot is that Squarespace isn't good for SEO. And I actually just did a webinar with my friend Meg, who's an SEO and Google AdWords expert. It's all she does day in, day out. And one of the myths that she debunked for us is the Squarespace and SEO myth. She shared that from her perspective as an SEO expert, she's happy to work with any platform. No one platform is better than the others. And in fact, Squarespace has a lot of inbuilt SEO features that make your life much easier. And they're always updating them. So they just in, I don't know if you noticed this, but in December, 2018, they had this huge update where they added in all of these new SEO features um, that make life just so much easier. And so I think sometimes that myth, that myth is out there. And I often think that the information's a little bit outdated too. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's scary to move to another website platform, Um, but I think it's important to look at your website right now and notice if it's working for you. So how do people know if their website's working for them besides, you know, booking clients? What are some ways we can track to see if the, the updates that we need to do or have done are working in our favor? This is such a good question. So I would say, first of all, look look at your acuity scheduling, look at your Calendly, whatever that is, you know, are people booking those calls? Is it helping you generate leads? Ask people how they found you when they're hiring you. Is it through, think about that process. So is it through a referral? Did somebody say, Hey, go work with Lindsay. And then they came to your website and then they booked a call and made that decision. So pay attention to the kind of anecdotal data around and ask people questions because people will tell you stories about how they got to you or how they felt when they came to your website. That's really helpful. For example, one of my clients shared with me that she hired me because she really loved my images and felt really connected to me through that. So that's really helpful information. And then if you want to dig into the nitty gritty data, Google Analytics is absolutely the place to do it. It's really quick and simple to set up. And through that, you can see, you know, which social media platforms are driving traffic to your website. You can set up goals so you can track conversions to your email list. Um, You can really do a lot with analytics. And so you can see, um, sometimes it's surprising. Like I looked at mine recently and I thought, oh, wow, I'm spending all this time on Instagram, but actually I can see that Facebook drives most of the traffic to my website, Mm. organic Facebook. So Mm. actually I want to be leaning in a little bit more there and maybe scaling back on the Instagram. Mm. 
That's, that's really important to take notice of. And I love their analytics section um, because it gives you so many details. What's some, I know there's a lot of details that you can get from that, that space in your back end of Squarespace. Um, but what are some important ones, like the ones that you always go to, to that give you mo- the most insight? Squarespace has, like you mentioned, they have their own analytics dashboard, which is so awesome. And then I also recommend people install Google Analytics. They're slightly different, but they provide much the same information. So when you're looking at either of those, the things that I love to look at is where are people coming from to get to this website? So I like to look at the different social media channels that people are coming from. And I like to look at how long people from those social channels stick around and kind of what they do. So you'll see if you are on Pinterest, that Pinterest users typically stay a lot longer than people coming from Instagram. And that makes sense, right? If we think about Pinterest, because we're driving people to blog posts where Mm -hmm. there's quite a lot to read. So that's really interesting to look at because it'll help you understand which of your marketing efforts are having results. And then I also like to look at, um, I like to look at other websites that are driving traffic to my site. It'll help you see if you've gotten any media mentions lately, or you've just been featured on somebody else's site. It's sometimes a nice surprise. And then I like to look at, um, I like to look at the devices that people are coming on. Mm. Um, This one, you don't have to check this one all the time because it doesn't change a lot over time, but it is interesting. So you can look at, are most of my visitors coming on an iPad? Are they coming on a phone? Are they coming on a desktop? And then you can think about tailoring that experience a little bit. Mm. I, I love that too. And obviously the mobile is probably going to be higher than the desktop. So that's really important when I look at like my site after I make a big update, always pull your site up on your phone to see how it looks because it, uh, it can look a lot different than on your desktop. That's really important to do. Absolutely. And Squarespace has a mobile preview in when you're building out a page, you can toggle between different screen widths and see how it looks. So I love doing that as I'm building it out. Mm -hmm. But like you said, checking it on a real device is the best way to know what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite template on Squarespace to build websites on? My very favorite template is the Brine family. Mm -hmm. So the way that Squarespace works is that they've got templates that have names, but the templates are also grouped into these family units. And so what that means is that a template family will all share the same underlying DNA, the same features and functionality, the back end will work the same way. So when you see those templates in the Squarespace preview, they might look really different on the outside, but under the hood, they're the same. So when I talk about the Brine family of templates, that's what I mean. So there are heaps of templates within that Brine family. But the reason you want a template in the Brine family is that it has the most functionality. It's got the most modern functionality. They're the newest templates. They tend to get updated the most often and they have the most kind of granular control over things like how your phone looks on mobile. They're just, they're awesome. Do you use Brine, Lindsay? I do. And I, sw- I actually made the switch about a month and a half ago to Brian and I, I like it so much more. I, I used to be using the Pacific and it's a little bit, it, it does have that more modern look to it. So I'm really happy with my change. Yeah. Why did you decide to make that switch? I really liked the, the visual aspect. It seemed like it stretched everything out a little bit more. Um, I always want to have a website with index pages, even though Pacific had that as well. Um, and I liked their, you know, just like basic vanity things, um, even though people make a template switch and they think that's going to look like how it does on the template. Um, but I really like how, I don't know, is the, maybe I'm not, I'm not too techie right now, but the width of your like header images and the actual body of the website seems to be wider. Do you have a little bit more wiggle room with everything? Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. I think one of the awesome things about Brine that you mentioned is those index pages. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a website and you can see that, let's say the homepage is made up of maybe six different sections and we've got a couple of sections of full width images or full width blocks of color, and then some of the other sections are text, 
and it's a Squarespace site, that's been built using an index page, which not all of the themes have, um, but all of the Brine themes do have that. Mm -hmm. And I love index pages because you can duplicate them if you have multiple sales pages or you just need that section over on this other part. It's so much easier to use. Oh yeah. I do that all the time. (laughs) I use Squarespace for everything, Lindsay. I use it for not only my main website, I use it to build webinar pages, Mm -hmm. um, webinar registration and replay pages, landing pages to capture people's email addresses, pretty much everything you can think of, I build it out in Squarespace. And I love that duplication feature because it means I'm not reinventing the wheel. I can just Mm. make like a webinar registration page template once and then duplicate it as I need to, which is so awesome. Yes. It makes your life so much easier. And it, when, when we make our lives easier, it makes us feel like we have control over our business instead of waiting for somebody, you know, like your designer to do it when you don't even know how to get in and, or making a landing, something simple like a landing page. I mean, so, so many people struggle with that. And if you're not using the right tools, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you. So you kind of know where we're going to go with that. (laughs) Use the website platform that's easy for you. And if you are using Squarespace or WordPress or whatever, and you're feeling called to kind of judge up your website, make it work for you. What's a great way to start? How can they get started with your techniques? The best way to get started with that is to come and get my free training. It's called Website Strategy 101. And whether you have no website yet or you have a website, but you just know it could be better, this is the place to get started. So it's a 10-minute video training and a workbook. And you can come and get that over at simplesiteblueprint.com. I love that. We will put that in the show notes definitely because I don't know, I think everybody's getting like antsy and wants to go play with their website now. (laughs) I love that. That's always on workshops and on podcasts. When people tell me that, I'm always like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, it's definitely my happy place to be when I need to make some changes. Like I love playing in the back end of my website and, and making it, you know, just work a little bit more simpler and easier. And I like taking things off. That makes it, that makes me feel good. Like, oh, I don't need a homepage that will scroll for days. I just need something really basic with giving them a place to go. And just, I think your goal should be keep people moving in the direction where your end goal is. Yeah, I think that's such a good point, Lindsay, because even though you're, you've been doing this for a few years now and you're really established, you are still tweaking and testing things and adjusting your website as your business evolves and as you evolve. And so that idea of it being an ongoing process, I think is really important to understand. Mm -hmm, Definitely. Cami, thank you so much for being on the show. You shared so many great inspirational tips for us. And I know that everyone's going to want to go and snatch this simple site blueprint. We'll put it in the show notes, but thank you again. I really appreciate everything that you shared with us. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. I am so grateful for you. and I want to be sure you are a part of my free community. Go to dreamclientcommunity.com and join our free Facebook group. We have all kinds of cool things happening every single day, so don't miss out. Also, if you love downloading freebies, check out my freebie vault on my website by going to lindsaymaloney.com, selecting freebie vault, and there you can download all the things that will help you start and scale your coaching business. And if you're feeling extra generous, be sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next episode. 